CEO Robin from Creating the Difference. I want to talk to you a little bit about symmetrical versus asymmetrical bowling balls and tell you what we're going to do to be able to show you something a little bit different. I've got some different core shapes here I want to show you and talk to you a little bit about what they are. These are shapes that I designed in the past. This shape here happens to be symmetrical and you can see that it's round all the way around. And as a result of that, this is a symmetrical shape. Once I begin to shave some of the mass off of this shape, I begin to make it asymmetrical. So this shape here, you can see some of that has been shaved off of both sides. And now this shape has begun to become asymmetrical. This has even more shaved off. And you can see, especially from this profile here comparatively, how different these are. You can see how much more material there is on the sides, less and then even less. And that's the difference between symmetrical moving toward asymmetrical. Now you say, why does that even matter? Well, there's multiple ways of creating asymmetry. You can create it this way, like we're doing here, or you can look at it this way too. This ball happens to be symmetrical all the way until we got to this spot right here. We put a little flat spot. This does not have a lot of asymmetry to it, just a little bit. Same thing with this shape. When I designed this shape, this shape has a little bit more asymmetry to it. As you can see, as we spin it around, there's some asymmetry to it as well. Then you look at something like this, and this has got a lot of asymmetry to it. And you can kind of see I've actually located, showing you where what's called the high mass bias or the high RG axis is in the bowling ball. And you say, well, why does any of this matter? What this is showing you is, is that this is where the majority of the mass is away from the ball. You can kind of see that around the ball. And then this is where the majority of the mass is concentrated under of the ball, which is the pen. That's why these are in two different spots. Now, going to the latitudes that we have over here, these balls are all symmetrical, right? It's a symmetrical core shape. Um, you can see that we put that on the screen. You can see what that core looks like. And as a result of that, you go, well, these balls are all symmetrical. You did a test. You showed us all symmetrical balls. But what if you did that test and it was asymmetrical, right? What if you started adding that mass bias in the ball? Well, one of the ways that we can do that is we can actually add a weight hole into the ball. If we make it big enough, if we make it deep enough, we can actually create a similar effect of the asymmetry that's in this, these balls and make this symmetrical ball very, very asymmetric. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna drill gigantic purposely placed weight holes in this bowling ball. We will not drill one in this ball. This happens to be the 90 by half by 60 because that hole would have to be over here, which would be in the track. So that ball will not get one. But the rest of these balls are gonna get a gigantic weight hole in the ball that's specifically placed to allow us to get a high mass bias or like I'm showing you here, very similar uh, to these other core shapes that we've got that already have it kind of built in. So we're actually gonna drill these balls and we're gonna drill them to be asymmetric. Stay tuned. So one of the things that we wanted to do was make sure that we could minimize our ability to hit holes when we put this ma massive hole in the bowling ball. Well, we threw the bowling ball down the lane and you can kind of see the track marks where we wanted to put the hole. So to simulate that, we're gonna move the hole up and then angle the hole that way to be able to remove mass where we want to move it without hitting the flare ring so the ball doesn't roll over the hole. So now we've made these bowling balls asymmetric by putting a specific hole in them, which is no longer Ill is legal to do, by the way. You're not allowed to have weight holes in your bowling balls. But nonetheless, we did it for this test so we can educate you on what happens when you make a bowling ball that was symmetric, the core was symmetric, to make it more asymmetric like we're showing you these balls are over here. So this ball right here is our 45 by five by 30 ball. This ball right here is our 45 by five by 75 ball. This ball right here is our 45 by four by 30 bowling ball. And last but not least, this ball by here, right here is 45 by three and three eighths by 30. Now, we did not include this ball over here, and I told you that, because if we were gonna put a hole in this ball, it would be over here, which would be directly in Dustin's track, which wouldn't make for a very good video. So now we're gonna go on the lanes and see how these bowling balls roll. All right, so now we got our four bowling balls that are now asymmetric via these nice massive weight holes that we've placed in each and every one of them. This ball here is 45 by five by 30. We're gonna go ahead and throw it first. Newly fixed up asymmetrical track latitude. All right, so that gives us our first data point. Respect though. No big deal, we're gonna leave that like so, and we're gonna go to the next ball, which is actually going to be this one, which is actually 45 by five by 75. It also has a weight hole in it too. It's gonna to allow us to do a little bit of a comparison. I'm gonna pull up uh, this ball. We've also allowed you to see the flare of that ball while he's getting ready. Ball flared a lot. 
ball flared a whole lot. Okay, so here we go. So those shots were what you like to call aced. Right on top of each other, you can see there from the Specto data. Very good uh, comparison there between, once again, pin up and pin down. A little bit of difference, but very, 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 very tight ball motion for that second ball, which happened to be, uh, that's 45 by five by 75. You can kind of see the flare pattern on that ball. So now we're gonna move to uh, the bowling ball that's 45 by three and three eighths by 30. We're gonna have him throw that ball next. You're being able to see a lot of good comparisons here. All right, that falls within our little tight window there. Look at that, with the Specto data. Put the data showing once again, super, super tight. I mean, you can see the, he's throwing these balls pretty much the same for himself. And as a result, we're not seeing a ton of difference in the ball motion, nonetheless. All right, and we got last but not least, we're gonna throw the 45 by four by 30. So this will give you another little comparison. Now think about what we're doing here. We're actually giving you a comparison where there's only really one variable changing, and that is um, the pin and actual layout. Oh, so that one's not gonna count. He almost had four for four. The speculator is gonna say that wasn't a good shot. We're gonna delete that shot and throw that one again. But like I said, think about what we're showing you here. We're giving you a comparison between layouts and we're doing it in a fashion that really should hopefully give you some real good insight because the comparisons that we're making allow the balls to be the same and we've just made them asymmetric. So we've shown you symmetrical balls and asymmetrical balls by using this process that we're using, which is a little bit different. And not only that, but how often do you get brand new bowling balls drilled differently? Most of the time you get different bowling balls drilled differently and you assume that's the performance difference. Here we go. Another two pin. So that one, that one was in just a little bit more than we'd like it to be. So we'll go ahead. I mean, you can look at the Spectre data. The Spectre data is saying it's close. I mean, they're all really, really close. I mean, we're talking about, you know, we're, we're really, really close. 22, 21, 6, 22, 7, 22, and then the launch angle is uh, within four tenths all the way around. And the performance, look at the total hook. So you can see 23, 21, 24, 20. So Dustin, I want you now to just grab a ball. I don't want to know what ball it is. I want you just to grab any, any bowling ball you've got there, and I want you to, to throw it down the lane. I mean, I want to look, but I don't want them to know what's going on. Uh, and then we're going to see if you guys at home could tell and with the ball is. So I'm gonna have Dustin throw these balls. You're gonna watch them. And then he'll post at the end of the video uh, what ball he threw. So that was ball number one. We won't talk about what it is. We're just gonna show you that it's ball number one. Look at the Specto data there. It was in a little bit. Doesn't really matter at this point. We're just freestyling with the bowling balls, letting you kind of see uh, the performance difference. So we got ball number two. All right, so ball number two, we're gonna throw that ball now and kind of see what it does. And that's why I said, I want you to think critically about some of these things, especially when it comes to layouts and how different they truly are. All right, that's ball number two. Boy, you're the two pin king today. Captain two pin. All right, that's a nice little shot right there. So we're gonna grab another ball, make it a little different. Like I said, Dustin's a high caliber bowler. So he's, his ability to repeat is higher than normal. Uh, than most people. And if you're bowling on a typical house shot, which we're not, we're bowling on chromium, which is not a house pattern. Uh, we're using the Kegel Fire Oil, and all of that uh, should help to show some differences in these products. Ball number three, and we got a wash out. Okay, all right, fair enough, fair enough. That's all right, we'll throw another ball. We'll throw ball number four next. Um, but just think about that, right? So the next time you're going to get your ball laid out, I always tell people that are in our staff group that are with us, uh, make sure you pick the right bowling ball, right? If you pick the right bowling ball, uh, then picking the layout isn't nearly as critical because as you're seeing the differences that the layouts actually provide, you can fully understand the power of picking the right bowling ball. And we got another two pin with the five this time. All right, so that's all four bowling balls. Now, Dustin. I want you to pick your favorite ball. I want you to go to your favorite part of the lane and I want you to make one of your best shots because we're gonna get a little dark in here, give a little clutch bowling, little 
little specto action with the clutch bowling. We got some little games you can play over here, by the way. But Dustin's gonna grab his favorite one of the four, the, the newly made asymmetric latitude, and he's gonna give you one of his best. Ah, man, all I wanted you to do was strike for me one time. I was asking for one strike. I was running down the lane in case you didn't tell. And uh, obviously that didn't work out so well this time. All right, I'm giving you one more chance at this, Dustin. Right. I'm gonna give you one more chance to impress the fans with the strike. This is packed, right? This is gonna be 10 back with your newly made asymmetric latitude. Remember, you are not allowed to put weight holes in bowling balls. That is illegal. We did it because we wanted to show you guys something and now we've been able to show it to you. Are you ready? Yeah, I'm ready, you're ready. Flatty 10th in. Oh well, that was fun. Anyway, hopefully now you have a little bit more information, a little more insight about layouts, a little better understanding with layouts. If you've got more questions, you know, you can always consider joining our staff at CTD Bowling. Click on that, go to that link, click on the three little dots, and uh, man, I'm out of breath. And then uh, join the regional staff. The regional staff program is free from creating the difference. It is an opportunity for you to get in our staff group, ask questions, post videos of you bowling, get um, feedback from USBC coaches, and ultimately become a better bowler. So here are those four balls one last time. This right here. That was thrown first. Was thrown first. Was 45 by five by 75. This ball here was thrown second. And it happens to be, that's the T ball. So that happens to be 45 by three and three eighths by 30. This ball here was thrown third, and this one's the C ball, so it's 45 by four by 30. And last but not least was the A ball, or 45 by five by 30. So that was for the bowling balls that he threw in the dark. Now you got a little bit of more information about what's going on. Hopefully you enjoyed this video. Hit that like button, hit that subscribe button. Come on, man, it's time to get become a better bowler, get more involved in the sport of bowling. And uh, we appreciate you guys spending a few minutes of your time to watch this video uh, at the Creating the Difference Education Center in Hopkinsville, Kentucky. On behalf of Dustin Zaner and the rest of the people that have helped make this video possible, CEO Ronnie from Creating the Difference, talk to you soon.